the intensity would build and build and build, carried down by the wind. And as the uh, as it got into more fuel, it, like the intensity would build up. So it's controlled by doing this. What's this going to do? Um, these are different zones based on the, the topography of the terrain, and so they burn in stages. So they, this is the first section that they were. Why will it run out of fuel here? When it burn all the way back? I'm sorry. What, it's not going to run out of fuel here, right? It's going to burn all the way back. The wind is taking the. Flames. The wind, the wind blows it this way here. Yeah, but it, 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 it edges back, though, doesn't it? Yeah, but it, mostly the wind pushes. On est ici aujourd'hui dans le parc national des Mélines pour un brûlage dirigé. Un brûlage dirigé, c'est un feu de restauration. Euh, aujourd'hui, c'est pour un espace d'arbre qui s'appelle le pain rigide. Le pain rigide a besoin de feu pour régénérer. Euh, ça veut dire que un processus naturel, c'est la l'occurrence de feu euh, dans l'histoire de, de ce paysage. C'est utilisé dans l'autre monde, mais au Canada, c'est Parcs Canada qui a un programme de brûlage de risées qu'on qu fait euh, dans toutes les parts du, du pays, dans les parcs nationaux. Euh, ici, dans le parc national des Mélilles, c'est le quatrième brûlage dirigé que le parc a fait. Le parc a déjà fait euh, des brûlages en 2009, 2010, puis euh, 2000, euh, 2011. Yeah. And hard hats on at all times, and when you're next to heavy equipment, wear ear protection. Okay, first of all, put the cask at the end, because when we're on the side of the motor that is burning, we have to put the cask at the end of the motor. Okay, so we're going to have to Um, well, it's, it's very physical, like you know, and just uh, and just you can see that the that the terrain is is uh, is rough and everything like that. Um, as far as the fire behavior goes in uh, in prescribed fires, it's uh, it's a controlled condition, and uh, and and as you can see, it's the number of people and where the fire lines are and everything like that's well, very well thought out. Well, the reason the reason for the prescribed fire was to was to was to allow a species of tree called pitch pine yeah. to per to persist on the landscape. Um, they are they are fire dependent in their ecology, so they need to have a fire coming through every once in a while, and it uh, it creates a condition that's favorable for for the seedlings to grow, and uh, they're they're. They're shade, what we call shade intolerant, so they need to have the canopy opened up a little bit, and uh, and just and just get the get the ground prepared to accept the seeds and things like that. And it uh, it's pretty much how their their cycle works. Um, but we do we're like you know we're getting ready for planning for similar activities to this in this park, and okay. um, and the planning 
the planning that we did for this took about uh, it took us about two years to come up with uh, the plan for it. Okay. And then uh, last year we didn't get the we didn't get the right weather, so we just didn't do it, and we had to wait till this year. Okay, we, we, you need to wait to have a dry condition to uh, to do that. Well, it's more than just dry. It's it's uh, it's what we call the fire prescription, and it takes into account the the moisture level in uh, in in the uh, in the vegetation. It uh, uh, when the last precipitation was, uh, relative humidity, uh, wind direction, and wind speed. Okay. And all of that, all of those, uh, all of those numbers come up to what we call a fire prescription. Okay. And when you when you get the fire prescription, then that's your window of opportunity to to engage in this kind of management action. And if you don't, then you just have to wait.